Hi there and welcome to the Great Whale Road. Episode 1. What is the Great Whale Road first? If you don't know it, the Great Whale Road, uh, the developer describes it as a narrative RPG, but that's only half of it. It has very deep historic roots. It is also story driven, quest driven, out. Uh, I'd say and event driven. It has random events where you can choose what to do and which have a little bit of randomness and a little bit of non-randomness applied to it. Like there won't be the same result the same time and you have a lot of nice characters. Well, that is your main character that you can play based on the world you're in. In that case, we're going for the ancient Frisians. And we'll have the choice between two characters there, a male one that is more open to the world and a female one that is more traditional one. So where is this set? Where is the uh, whale road set? It is set in around 650 Anno Domini, which is a very interesting time when the Franks started their expansion. Like if, you, if you know the Franks, the Franks basically made France, but they also made Germany. So it was that big um, empire of the Franks that reached like maximum expansion around that time or that started that, that massive expansion. And uh, it has hand-drawn art, as you can see. And yeah, three different campaigns now. They have uh, recently patched the game so that there are two more campaigns. I'll show you them shortly. Just a little bit more about the historicity. It is uh, made by, like the historical part of it is made by uh, two historians. And so it is about, also about the ancient cultures. There are going to be little things that you notice if you know it, and if you don't know it, you'll learn them there. Yeah, like the Anglo-Saxons, the Franks, the Danes, even the strange, mysterious Picts have appearances. The Bretons and the Britons, the Frisians and the Saxons, these are um, our characters in this game in the yeah 650 period. Beowulf and other things happened there, were created there, even though Beowulf, I mean, yeah, if you know about Beowulf, it might not be <laughs> historical, but still, still, um, we have a lot to learn there, there's a lot of great strategy and not really grand, but strategy and tactical combat to be had. Some development from the RPG standpoint. It's a nice mix in a historical world that is really enchanting to play. So, <laughs> now I've talked enough. Let's start the game. So you can see what it's about. I'll just show you that you can play the Danes of Ulfersted. You can play the Franks of Furna. Or you can play, which we will, the Frisians of Duenburg. As I have Frisian roots, we'll just go for the Frisians. The settlement of Duenburg is the southernmost port of the Frisian kingdom. Frisians live basically in the Netherlands of today. It is far enough away from the coast to keep the Franks and their Christ priests at bay. So we are heathens, we are pagans, more, more like that, we are pagans. On the mainland, the Frankish domain already stretches far to the north, reaching the Rhin, which is the Rhine. Like, that's also fun about these old city names. You can Google them and find out where is that really, and what is the Rhin, and all kinds of things like that. And there are also, like, big settlements from then that are now, like, reduced to nothingness, reduced to ruins. I, I also live uh, in a bigger... Uh, like in a, in a small city, which has one or two like lost villages. 
Like that they were there a few hundred years ago and now they're not there anymore. There's not even there are some some walls there still and they tell the story of a once great settlement and we might encounter such settlements that, that today don't exist anymore. So on the mainland the Frankish domain already stretches far to the north, reaching the Rhin. Can you keep Duvenburg out of their grasp and hold on to your freedom and your gods? Let's begin the journey. The wind, briny wind of the whale road brings with it the promise of travel and trade. It blows across Duvenburg, a hub of trade and a gateway to the world's many cultures. Folk from far off lands like the Empire of the Romans and the Baltics walk shoulder to shoulder with Danes, Franks and your own kin. All who trade in Duvenburg pay their respects at the shrine of Nehalenia, your settlement's patron goddess of sea travel and trade. You have always welcomed the many peoples who travel the North Sea, but recently something has changed. Those who once knelt and offered sacrifices to Nehalenia now stand before her shrine stiff spines and shifty eyes. You remember one man who clutched a symbol in his hand, a ravioon cross, and refused to look at the goddess's likeness. That symbol, the cross, is burned in your mind like a brand. So it's a time of change we're in. These are the interesting times. And that is also a Chinese curse. May you live in interesting times. You don't want your times to be interesting. You want them comfy. But we are in year one in Duvenburg. And we want our times very interesting. Because that is fun to play. So the leader of Duvenburg. We can choose our leader now. You are a minor duke. Who has led the people of Duvenburg... For two years. You're young, but you were born in Etherling, so your rights are not questioned. Most of the questions put to you involve taxes and tariffs. Like a storm gathering on the horizon, you sense that greater decisions will soon present themselves. And you have two choices. Your Dizilithi Iron Arm, which is her, like the warrior queen here, believes strongly in the traditions and freedoms of the Frieden people. Or you are Ald Gisil Brightlock. That guy here with a strange smile. Your love for Bruvenburg is rooted in its open gates. A place of welcome for all people. And uh, maybe, I mean, our mission seems to be to preserve us from the Franks. And maybe we want to concentrate on the older gods. Because I'm personally interested in how was that belief system here for the Frisians. So I want to... I want to know. This Lithi Iron Arm. We're going to play her. You first took up a sword to defend your family from Saxon pirates at sea. You haven't been able to put it down since. Under your guidance, Duvenburg has built several outposts that ring the settlement, protecting it from outlaws and your neighbors to the south, the Franks. You raised tariffs on Frankish goods last year, dissuading some folk from trading here, but ultimately raising revenues. You invested that silver in improving the shrine to Nehalenia, and you insist that all who trade in Duvenburg first offer it respect and a sacrifice. When early winter morning the hall is pleasant enough, at least until the door crashes open, lets in an icy draft that cuts through the smoky but cozy walls. A young boy jumps up and down in front of you. There's a fight. A band of thieves is attacking the market. We we'll grab our weapons and run to the market. At the band of thieves before they can reach their ship. They are not giving up without a fight. Now we're going to learn about combat. Like that's the tutorial, but I'll just tell you what, what is most important about it. So uh, we have only assaults and heavies here, like the most common melee classes. 
They have different weapon choices and different armor choices, and that's the main thing about them. At the start of the combat, you place your guys here, and then you can move. We'll just do the same, and we'll probably not move our leader, Dizilithi, the total front, which is no problem, because she has a spare and, like, two reach, as does he. And he has only one reach, but he's like a blocker, so to say. And if you want to attack effectively, you first remove defense points. Uh, these are basically the, the rounds where you can place your people. So we had these in the first round, these in the second round, these will be in the third round. So you first remove defense points points if you want to play effectively and then you go for maximum damage. So we're going to do this right now and I'll show you how to remove defense points. So you can attack here, so you can see, you can also stop this. You, you could pierce here which has the advantage of um, always getting through some damage if you are against someone who has still defense points. That's the white bar here. The orange bar is the hit points. And uh, there's other attacks though too. Like there's slashing that is can be blocked by the defense points like fully. And then there is blunt and blunt removes the defense points. So if you have blunt weapons available it is advisable to Go for that first. Come on, we want to attack. Ah, yeah, of course. We don't have the reach. And we don't want to have the reach. Ah, we don't want to use it. We want to waylay here, which is waiting for them to come to us. Algizil uh, here, who could also pierce. And we'll just pierce here, because we have no other really good choice. Also with him, Pierce. And he's got a pierced foot now, which is a chance you have from attacking with spares. And we'll move like this way and then focus actually, because she will make an attack and waylay. So you, she can reach all the people here to the front line. Now with improved accuracy, you can see. We're also getting damage, as you can see. And we've, we've placed it so that our best defender gets the most. Oh, Seward. Wow, that was bad luck. Hmm, whom to attack? The Danish warrior here? Or the other guy? The other guy has... A lot less defense points still, but we can also uh, place our people here still. Move that way, and we can put Wana down and also move here. She's an assault, so she can go to the front row without a problem and slash here. Bam! But as you can soon see, We could have gone for blunt. Well, we're doing it now. Just to remove that stuff and make the defense a lot less good. So we can now hit him much easier and much better. So first remove the defense points if you can, then go for the rest. In that case, we have no blunt uh, weapons going for us, so we'll just go for the slash weapons. It's okay. Got a broken shield now, so defense points are also being removed by attacks, by standard attacks, but not that quickly and not that effectively. Wow, look at that. <laughs> How good are we here? It's crazy. Need to defeat the leader too. Which is this guy. And it, Actually, if your people get killed, they don't really get killed, they're just wounded. So it's not that bloody. 
what we'll do now is attack with a blunt. So we're reducing his defense points first. And then we can remove more. There we go. I'm just going for the safe bits here. Can still miss, of course, even if you. And Seward, oh, I think we might move away with him. Ow! And if you have a broken shield, you can repair it by just waiting one round, basically. These are your war cries. As you level up, you gain more of them. And you can choose between war cries. Then. But we don't need to use them right now, I think. We're just going for some damage. Uh, maybe we should have gone for them. <laughs> More accuracy would definitely have helped, right? There we go. Slash. And I think we should definitely attack here again. There we go. Another one bites the dust or is wounded more. More like that. Enemy turn, we're still on, and now we can get rid of the leader finally. Oh, we should have gone for the blunt weapon first. Still, uh, we would have to remove a lot, and it's done now, it's better probably, we'll see. Some piercing will help too. Oh, foot. There we go. Almost unfair to buff ourselves, right? And you heal you heal back up after a fight. There we go. We have defeated the leader. And you gain flawless victories if you don't lose anyone to unconsciousness. And you gain rewards all the time, mostly silver, for random generated encounters. I've saved our people. Nice going, eh? From the thieves. So now you return to the hall after the fight and instead of a horn of meat, a group of traders are waiting for you. Each of them has different interests. One deals mainly with the Franks, another with Saxon settlements along the River Elf, and the third has an agreement with a Danish Jarl in some place called Ulfersted, who offers some of their warriors as mercenaries. Well, I'd like to go for the Saxons, because they honor the same gods, and it was like one of the character traits of Gizili uh, the Iron Arm. The Saxons are thieves. At least we honor the same gods. Their forests are rich enough to help us through a hard winter or two. This is what your people say. If you act against them, their morale will, will go down. But otherwise, you can... It, it isn't like... They sometimes give you very good ideas. But you have to watch closely. You have to read between the lines sometimes. So we could sacrifice every Frank to wade and not trade with them. Saxons and Danes will steal our sheep and sleep with our women. So then no Franks, no Danes, no Saxons, no one. I've seen your woman and your sheep. The Danes will rather sleep with your sheep and leave you on your woman. The Saxons aren't that picky. Well, the Saxons are thieves, but at least we are under the same gods. Their forests are rich enough to help us for a hard winter or two. Agree to support more trade with the Saxons. And now we're going for the yearly planning. There's a lot of interesting things here. You can improve all the areas. 
depending on what you like and what you think is necessary and you can assign population you shouldn't be um, like taking all people of food because you need food to survive I'm oh, sorry so food is a priority definitely at least first when you still need to build some stuff so you can check around you should if you want to improve something you should note these things down it's they're very very helpful to know what you want to catch from your travels and as you see here you can already upgrade the warfare if you like but you have so many people in there already so it's probably not needed now, this is more like craftsmanship and trade is more about income this is more about survival but hunting also gives pelts husbandry sometimes gives uh, cows then we got traditions giving the happiness bonus that improves everything so what to go for we're going for go safe bit and maybe some trading would be nice too the rest we don't want our people happy we want warfare and i think we can already upgrade the warfare here five less pelts so the next thing will be we need iron pelts and tools and i'm just making uh, making a short pause here well, I want to note down for myself what we need there. And that will be a little bit boring to watch, right? But it helps immensely. Same goes for the ship upgrade here. Note down what you need and go for the upgrades. This is the best investment that you can make and will help you immensely with the game, apart from being good at the tactics game. We'll go more into strategies uh, and stuff in the future but yeah it's not the hardest game to be honest so it's mostly about the atmosphere and the historicity and the fun being had together as Frisians the friendly Frisians so uh, thank you for watching and happy gaming to you see you in the next episode at the village meet